Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Today I'm speaking with Scott Brown. He's the managing director of Pure Hydrogen. ASX code is PHT, PH2, not PHT, PH2. And they've got first mover advantage in the hydrogen space. Boy, there's a lot to learn, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to be talking about why what they're doing is such exciting times uh, for Pure Hydrogen, some of the partnerships they're doing, doing a lot in this space at the moment, and it is fascinating. Scott, great to see you. Welcome to Small Caps. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, it certainly is a interesting and, uh, you know, exciting space. Yeah, because a couple of years ago, I, hydrogen wasn't talked about that that much, and now it seems to me that I hear it all the time. But before we get into that, Give our viewers uh, an overview of who are Pure Hydrogen. So, look, we're, what we're trying to become is a hydrogen utility. That is, we, we want to be the ecosystem. We want to provide a solution to particularly um, uh, large companies and, and even smaller ones, but uh, and also governments. So they can come to, to us to get devices. Like um, right now, we can provide trucks, uh, buses um, uh, and generators, uh, hydrogen generators, and also the hydrogen. And so we really want to be a, a bit of a one-stop shop uh, and help them transition from, you know, their dirty diesel into <laughs> clean hydrogen. Don't like the dirty diesel. Um, I've heard, and I don't know if, if this is true or not, that hydrogen potentially can be a little bit unstable for transport and can be a little bit tricky. Um, I'd love your view on hydrogen and, and like we've been, a, why is it all of a sudden now the ability for us to use hydrogen? Why hasn't it been used in the past? Um, yeah, look, th that's a good question. There's a couple of things that have, uh, that have been changing. Firstly, there is a real momentum around the world, particularly brought from governments, but also from um you know, large corporations that may be a bit woke that all want to be zero emissions by a certain time. Now, you've heard, you know, dates, people have got different dates, but if they're serious about that, that means they've got to transition away from traditional fuels like your petrol and, and diesel, and particularly for transport, you've got right. to then uh, convert over to something else. Now, people have been... Um, you know, very keen on uh, uh, EVs or e electronic vehicles. Yep. Um, hydrogen is all part of that story. It is a vehicle that's um, electronic. There's the same platform. The only difference we're doing is adding something that will generate electricity on board. So instead of having a multiple batteries, you have a hydrogen uh, generator, which is a fuel cell, it's a very simple device. It's been around for a long time and it's twice to three times more efficient than your traditional internal combustion engine, your ICE engine. So that's part of the reason why you're now starting to see technologies that have been there a long while all converging with this demand to um, go to cleaner and, and greener uh, energy all, all, all happening. So that's why you're getting a, a massive demand in in hydrogen. And you, you might have seen curves where people are talking about a, a very big trajectory over the next you know, 10, 15 years, hydrogen demand will take off. And particularly if, even if we just transition, you know, let, let's say 20% um, of the truck fleet from uh, diesel to hydrogen, there's a huge amount of demand in that. Then you've got um, all the generators. So think of people like um, you know, farmers and, and mines, um, construction yeah. sites. They all use diesel generators at the moment. Um, the government is forcing a lot of companies to go to greener solutions, and they're actively hunting us out and talking to us about how can we have a zero-emission uh, supply of of energy or electricity that that will meet the, tick the box and allow us to get the the government contract. 
Um, so you're seeing this in uh, Queensland with the they're coming in the with the Olympics in thirty two. Oh, of course, yep. They're talking about all their projects to be you know a zero emissions Olympic Games. Well, that means all their contractors have got to you know meet that standard. And so wow. we're already talking to construction companies now that are wanting to build um, you know some of the venues, et cetera. They're all talking about, well, can we get a hydrogen generator to power up our site? And okay, so Scott, let me just stop you for a second there. If they go from a diesel generator to say a pure hydrogen a hydrogen generator, is there yeah. a higher cost with that? How difficult is it? There's a higher capital cost, but the unique thing is hydrogen, where it's priced now with um, uh, diesel, uh, hydrogen is actually cheaper. And so the fuel costs, we, we can run um, the same sort of output of energy for a lower fuel cost. Now, what what's, uh, um, you know, the, the difference just on the, the capital costs is more, uh, is greater, but on the, the actual running cost, it's actually lower. And so, you know, that's a really significant thing. So if you're looking at it over a lifetime um, for the device, you can actually work it out. So the cost of ownership is cheaper over over that uh, time. Over time, over time. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so when I've spoke, and I've got very little understanding, I've got a little bit, but in the past, Scott, I've known about, I think it was blue and green hydrogen, but I sure. think you're working with something called emerald hydrogen, so Correct. now I'm going, okay. What's and also turquoise. So l let me just pull something up um, that will just explain that quite quite well. Um, uh, I've got two slides you should have a look at. And okay. the uh, second to pull that up. Um, so th this is a, a, a bit of a chart. Uh, can you see that now? Yeah, I've got next slide as well as the other slide. So it's a little bit small. <clears throat> can okay. see. All right. So there's, um, yeah, there, there's a number of different ways you can manufacture hydrogen. And in fact, because it's the most common um, element in the universe, um, hydrogen will bond with a lot of different things. But the most common one is water. Um, so um, people have heard about um splitting um, the hydrogen and the oxygen and um, by using lots of electricity. And that's often referred to as green if you're using renewable energy sources to do that. Okay. Um, so we're, we're quite interested in that. There's electrolyzers that will do that. The only issue with that right at the moment is the electrolyzers are quite expensive, so the capital cost is high, but also you have to pay the price of the electricity um, and you know, you use quite a lot of electricity. So those two things mean it's an expensive way to do it. Uh, it still provides zero emissions, but um, also we're looking at uh, two other forms, which are uh, turquoise and emerald. Both of them have, um, you know, if they're done properly, will have zero emissions or, or net zero. Um, emerald is taking um, waste streams and then making turning that into hydrogen, and there are some other byproducts with that, but you can use uh, wood waste, which is what we're doing at our um, Morton Bay plant, but we're also looking at a plant that would do uh, municipal waste. And the, the good thing about that is you actually get paid to take the waste to convert it to, to um, you know, a new product. Um, Sorry, Scott, so, to you just just quickly. Is that is that when you say municipal waste, is that landfill? Because we've got a big problem with landfill, not just correct, here. Correct, it is. And, and a lot of governments are looking at a solution for that. This could be a way of providing that solution that um, you take what otherwise would be going into landfill. So your, your domestic waste, um, you know, your stuff that you would put in your rubbish bin and put out uh, and, and is collected would be recycled and converted into hydrogen and things like road base. So that, that is something where um, the 
you will actually get paid a gate fee to take that waste and then convert it into um, the hydrogen and, and also the road base that I'm talking about. So you know, we, we see quite a big future for that. And certainly it's something that governments are very keen to get a solution on because they're running out of landfill everywhere. Um, the, the other one is uh, turquoise hydrogen. We're very excited about this. We've got a pilot plant that's coming up in um, the middle of this year, converting natural gas into hydrogen and also um, uh, graphene and, and, gra and carbon nanotubes. We think that's going to be a very big game changer in the world of hydrogen. It's got zero emissions, so there's no emissions from the natural gas. The carbon is converted to graphene. It has a, a number of uses, and there's a lot of revenue potential out of the graphene side of it. Um, and so we're, we're quite excited about those uh, ways of making it. And more importantly, I guess the the cost structure is quite um, lower too because turquoise uses about a, an eighth of the electricity uh, and emerald uses about half the, as much electricity as green. So it means both of those can be at a lower cost per kilogram of hydrogen. And obviously that's something that we're very keen to ensure because it's not only making um, making a, a green solution, but also having it a cost structure that is going to make sense to for companies and, and, and individuals to, to transition over to hydrogen rather than stay with the the more traditional, dirtier fuels like diesel. Yeah, and I see that you've got a a, a, a slide up there which says the hydrogen cost per kilo, which is different. Yeah. Cor correct, yeah. So, um, and this is based on the current, um, you know, uh, uh, prices of various components. It will change over time like all things. Um, but this is the the current um, you know cost curve that we've got, and obviously it makes a big difference. Um, you know, having having something that that's going to be at a lower a lower price point means we can offer it at a, at a lower price to our, our uh, businesses and 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 customers. All right. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. You should be looking at turquoise, emerald, and green, and forget about blue and grey. Uh, so, I think so yeah. we've just had a really good um, hydrogen overview, which is great. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned Queensland and you mentioned the Olympic Games, which is coming yeah. up in 2032. Is anyone else doing something similar to what you're doing? I just want to f get a feel for who's out there in the market or is what you're doing in that sort of turquoise and... Um, Look, there, there are people that are trying to do something similar, particularly in turquoise. Uh, there are also people, I think, at, at you know various stages, um, trying to do things in uh, the emerald space, and there's other people trying to do green projects. So th there are there will be projects coming to market. I, I think the issue is the demand we we see is quite explosive, and um, you know I, I think we're going to struggle collectively as an industry to keep up with the demand for certainly the next five years. Um, and, you know, part of it is um, we're also introducing the first um, hydrogen fuel cell truck that will do garbage. Um, and we've also got a, so a garbage truck that's for JJ Richards or JJ Waste. Yeah. Um, we've also got a, a, a prime mover that will be for Pepsi. Both of those we think will have a lot of, uh, interest with particularly corporates, you know, and the big uh, trucking companies out there. Um, and so we, we see we can get potentially quite a lot of orders and then on the back of that we'll get uh, orders for the hydrogen as well. So do they retrofit the trucks or do you go to the to the truck manufacturers themselves? Yeah, so we, we've, done, we've got a, 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 um, a, a number of partnerships yeah. Um one of them is with uh, H Drive. So th these two trucks are coming uh, from a company called H Drive. Uh, we have uh, distribution rights in ten different countries, um, so we're very um, plugged in into that company. But we also have a, a company called H Two X Global, 
that we've got an ownership interest. They are also bringing in trucks that um, that will be uh, for the um, about three and a half ton market. So the refrigerated. So th these will be hydrogen fuel cell trucks um, for the Australian market. Um, and th there is also a bus that's on our our, uh, our website that is a hydrogen fuel cell bus. It, it, it sort of shows you all the different components of, of the bus and, and, you know, how it's sort of made. But we can make similar sort of buses uh, and have them in Australia. So, um, yeah, well, we, we're at a space that's quite interesting and I, I, th I think we're almost at a pivot point uh, for hydrogen use in Australia and we're, we'll start to see a lot more examples of how hydrogen can be used to, to power and transport things around. Well, I think your timing's not too bad either, Scott, because I'm talking to you in what is it, March 2023, and you mentioned the Olympics in Queensland in, what's that, 2032? Two, yeah, that's right, yeah. So, so does one that of the projects of we're work? working already, and we have publicly announced this, we've got a partnership for OSHIPS. Now, OSHIPS help develop the ferries on Brisbane River, yep. so those little river cats. Um, they're all diesel at the moment, and one of the things we're looking to do is put a... Uh, a fuel cell generator that will help power up. The, the, they're going to try one one um, uh, cat that will be um, battery powered. But again, we can supplement um, you know all, all the batteries with having a hydrogen generator, and that that's the whole thing. You know, you can have that provide the electricity to the battery, and it keeps the battery at, at a, a constant charge. So it doesn't have to then plug up overnight, um, and which obviously you know it takes your your device out of service. You know, for example, a ferry you would you wouldn't be able to operate it during that that time that's being recharged. The same for a truck. You know, people that are operating these um, trucks typically want to run them as as hard as they can because they're a big ticket item. You don't want to be, uh, you know, having a, a big time off the road to recharge batteries. So the the advantage with hydrogen, you can recharge very quickly in, in like 10, 15 minutes. You've got your um, complete recharge for a truck um, and it will last, you know, a long time. You can you can run it for four or 500 uh, Ks without uh requiring recharge. Well, it's the same, it sounds the same as refueling with petrol. Now, this is Scott, we're running out of time. There's so much to talk about. We'll have to do this again soon. But um, before we do, our audience very much interested in sort of what the corporate structure of the company is, et cetera. So uh, just, just remind me, when did you list and how many shares on issue, how much cash in the bank? Do you think you need to go back to do a capital raise? Give us that sort of an overview. Okay, so um, look, we uh, came from, um, there was a merge of two companies, um, uh, Real Energy and Strata X. We merged, uh, I think it was um, now coming up to three years ago. Um, we changed our name deliberately to Pure Hydrogen. We saw that hydrogen was the way to go and um, we made a deliberate decision to go into that market. We do have some legacy gas assets. We probably will do something uh, with those uh, and that, that will probably be spun into a separate entity. Um, in terms of capital structure, we've got uh, about 353 million shares on issue at the moment. Uh, we've got 14.7 million cash at 31 December. Um, so in terms of cash position, we're, we're very well, um, you know, in a, a very good position. Um, we don't need to go to market. Our, our strategy is to align with people, particularly in relation to manufacturing of hydrogen. So we don't have to own 100% of the plant. We're quite ha happy to, for example, in Morton Bay, we're only taking a 25% interest, but we own 100% of the output. So we can sell 100% of that hydrogen into the market and we'll, we'll continue to do, uh, expect us to do other deals like that where we will put very little money up in, in terms of building plants, but
but will take a position in terms of um, you know uh, having all the output that we could then sell into the marketplace. And and you know the margins are, are quite quite good for hydrogen. Uh, we, we certainly see that. Um, the other question you had: did, uh, Are we going to go back to the market? I, yeah, certainly not at the moment. Um, we, we've got plenty of firepower to to see us through um, and to get us into um, you know generating cash flow positive before we'd uh, go back to the market. You're already ger- generating revenue, though, aren't you? Uh, look, not not really until we get our. Um, uh, plant up with Morton Bay, we, we, okay. we'll, we'll generate some revenue, but it, it, it won't be significant. Okay. It, it's once we get Morton Bay up, we'll, we'll start generating significant revenue. All right. Well, I think it's a it's a fascinating area that you're in, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you go and check out the website. There's so much information on there to because, as always, do your own research and make sure that you understand what's going on. But certainly, uh, for me, Scott, it seems like it's right place, certainly right time, and definitely right commodity. But let's wrap it up by saying, give us three reasons why people should be sitting up and taking notice of you right now. Okay, so we're just at the ground floor of what we think will be a tremendous um, uh, acceleration in hydrogen demand. And so you need to get on board on someone that's really well positioned. And that, that that's where we are. We, we've got um, you know, a lot of the hard work has been done. We're now really well positioned. We've got lots of companies that are approaching us to you know, provide hydrogen to them and also the solutions. And so the, the second thing is you know, we, we've got all the, the hard work in place. The infrastructure is there. It's now capitalising it. And we're at a significant discount Um to where we've been historically, let alone where we could go um, as as the company progresses. So, you know, we're, we're still very committed to turning this company into a billion plus uh, market cap company, and we think oh. all the ingredients are there. Well, there you have it, ladies. What a way to finish! He's determined to turn it into a one billion dollar company. They're not there yet. What's your market cap at the moment, Scott? It's a, uh, just over uh, fifty million. There you go. So, as I said before, do your own research, but in very good hands, the start of a change in renewable energies by using hydrogen and in all the different facets that they can in in trucks, in buses, on cats on the Brisbane River and potentially helping the um, Brisbane Olympics, the Queensland Olympics, get underway and become net carbon uh, emissions uh, Olympics for the I think probably the first time. Scott, great to chat with you, and I look forward to chatting with you again on Small Caps. Th- th- thanks, Kerry. Cheers.